I love Procreate Dreams for Toon Squid and haven't looked back. Creating this clip was a clear intuitive process that I'll go through here to show the app's capabilities in context. This is Toon Squid's interface, and clicking this eject button will reveal your timeline working area broken down by frames. If your audio is raw like mine, you can import it and use the markers to find the exact section that you're working on, then select the word split audio clip that appears at the right hand bottom corner, dragging the selection to the front. This showed me the general time of my narration. Separating, like colors in the spectrum, whatever composed me up until then just slid apart. And then I decided to bring in my final audio that's linked to a placeholder image. Separating colors, like in, the colors spectrum, in the spectrum, whatever composed, whatever me, up composed me up until just, then just slid apart. In Dreams, I really like the color coding of the layers, but here the markers work just as well. And as you click on the mark, a box pops up where you can place notes regarding anything, dialogue, technical points, whatever makes sense to you and your workflow process. For the first shot, I want the character spinning into the sky. So I placed keyframes along each frame for rotation and in scale. This creates the motion of disappearance as the character is drawn upward into the sky. However, this was just a sketch of how I wanted the movement so that I can come back with my full asset and background and remember how I wanted the basic movement and then possibly improve or get more detailed about the minutia of the shot when I go for the final pass. For the middle part, in the narration, I wanted the word separating to match my character's literal disintegration and to show this by the body floating slowly and the jacket coming apart. This is only about four seconds, but is a very important aspect to address because it's important to chain the beginning and end shots together. As I worked on it, nothing was really coming together for me, so I moved on to the ending. While Toon Squid does offer vector for asset creation, I went to Adobe Fresco to create my assets. I started with a very basic separation of parts because I don't want to drain my time in case at the end I want to change something. And then when I start to composite, I can also write scripts and after effects that can override a lot of work in the present moment. But basic rigging in Toon Squid is a major feature of this app, and it's pretty easy to learn. Once you have your assets, you click on this node insignia, which opens the transform hierarchy. You'll be familiar with something like this if you have experience with After Effects, but if not, it's fairly self-explanatory. So you have your anchor asset, which for me is the jacket. I want the arm to float backwards a bit, so I embed that within the jacket and follow it up by the hand attached to the arm, which would be the sleeve. What's important here is addressing the anchor or pivot points to be aligned with the area that you want your motion to take the path of. This creates a chain-like effect where each asset is now linked and the individual adjustments can be made while still being part of a whole through keyframing. This is where things can become as simple or complicated as you like, because with each asset you are able to adjust every option in the keyframe that is offered, as well as the ease curve which is signaled by the wave line next to the keyframe option. We can also manipulate the behavior of our keyframes with the same ease curve idea. If you tap on your keyframe node points, a menu of how you want to adjust your trailing movement will appear. A handle will pop up and you'll be able to shape the path according to your selection. And this really illustrates how intricate your animations can get. You can spend days here refining your work, which is super exciting. Coming back to the middle, I decided I wanted to do frame by frame within Toon Squid. Since this scene is part of a larger context of losing the feeling of reality, I thought changing modes visually could aid in this detached kind of feeling. I relied on the onion skin for this, and it's a more abstract visual narration than I had initially planned, but given that this entire work is marked by a specific visual style that's grounded in reality, I felt okay taking this risk of abstraction, but what was really important to me here here is the transition back into the film's typical look of that stylized outline and full color fills. I worked here without a plan, just experimentation on how to overlap the frames and design the dissolution of the midsection in a way that wasn't a jerky jump cut, because that's not the feeling that I needed here. After having time away from the starting shot, I imported my asset for the finishing clip and made slight changes to my initial layout as well as putting in the background to provide the contrasting movement. Side by side is when you can really take notes of the changes that I made. Separating colors, like in, colors the in the spectrum, whatever composed, whatever me, up composed me up until then, just slid apart. 
So I hope this walkthrough tutorial was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.